Hi, joining me today is Chris Robinson, the Global Test Systems Manager for Medtronic. Hi, Chris, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Just to get things started, Medtronic is a pretty big company. In fact, it's the world's largest medical device maker. Could you tell us a bit about the company and its vision in your own words? It started uh, a couple of years after World War II in 1947 by Earl Bakken in his garage. He was a tech that worked at a hospital. And he, at, at the time, there was nothing they could do for a heart that stopped pacing itself. So he got busy in his garage, and he created the first um, outside-of-the-body pacemaker. And it worked so well, it just kind of took off from there. Medtronic's been around for 70 years, so seven decades. And you've been there for 30 years, or maybe more than 30 years. I wonder if you could tell us uh, what drew you to Medtronic uh, back then. When you, know, when you get a hug from somebody who has, you know, people in my neighborhood all know what I do. There's quite a few of them with pacemakers, and I get questions all the time. It's that extra thing that kept me so interested over the decades. Uh, could you tell us a bit about uh, the allure or what drew you to the side of, of, of test engineering within Medtronic? The real draw for test was the importance of test, and but not test applications, the test systems specifically, because every pacemaker has about 10,000 electrical tests. And we do about wow. a million to five of these a year. And we have to keep every single piece of test data retrievable within 60 minutes for 10 years. And then when you partner yourself with somebody like NI that owns the app software, they own system link, they own the equipment, it just makes pairing up those easier for our systems design. Chris, at NI we have a phrase we use and it's to engineer ambitiously. I wonder if you could share with us what that phrase means to you. If we could capture all of pay, um, cardiac pacing in a single instrument, and drive the cost of tests down and keep that um, quality of test high, this is ambitious. I was thinking about the term engineering ambitiously from the perspective of really our world in production test, and oftentimes it's about operational efficiency and cost. And I wonder if you had a, a, a take on how we can be ambitious in engineering when it comes to the production side of test. I actually uh, was inspired by a, a change in business strategy from NI which just left me speechless. When you changed your management structure, not to center around an instrument, but to center around a business. And so you're saying, okay, let's take a look at medical pacing and the medical business and what are the test requirements around them. Let's grow some par partnerships with key opinion leaders like myself and just ask them what would it look like. And I really like ambitious enough to say, could we own the pacing test with a single instrument? And you guys are uniquely positioned to say, we own all of the instrumentation, we own the product app software, we own System Link, and everything LabVIEW, so you can decide which boundary. Do you want this in LabVIEW? Do you want this in the instrument? Do you want it in the dashboard you're watching with it? Because anybody can spend an exorbitant amount of money, but can you do it at a, at a great cost? And reliable. anything simpler is more reliable. I was thinking as well about the, a stat you gave me before we had our conversation today. I think it was 51% of the world's pacemakers come from uh, there in Tempe, Arizona, of, of the world's pacemakers, not just Medtronic pacemakers. And I, I imagine there is an, an ambitious aspect, especially to the manufacturing and the testing of pacemakers, that comes from just the kind of scale that you've been able to attain. Is that, an, is that also something that you would consider uh, an ambitious uh, way to engineer your uh, testers? Yes. Um, when we scale, one thing that we did is we created, I call it the Mr. Potato Head. So we have a LabVIEW NI-based uh, test architecture. We call it a Saturn. And the moons of the Saturn are all the variants of the Potato Head. So you could add Bluetooth to it. You could add a sound detector. You could add a motion detector. Everything is plug and play onto this tester. And it's all a LabVIEW-based system, and it's all on the LabVIEW app. So if you're, if you're at a facility in Singapore and you make a certain um, uh, group of pacemaking products and you only need this feature, we can tailor the system. It just unplugs and plugs because we kept it really simple, and that keeps our cost of test system low, and it also keeps our mean time between failures very high, and everything is modular. And to be ambitious... We have manufacturing sites, and Medtronic has 49 manufacturing sites that they contract manufacture with. 
And uh, anybody who's in the test business knows how problematic it is to get a contract manufacturer to own yield and own the test system. Is it failing for the product or the tester? How do you discern? I wanted to build this test system that's deployable. So all the test requests come out of Tempe and we deploy the test system and through System Link we can monitor it and we can mow control and we can send in. There's only 10 spare parts per test system and all of which can re be replaced in 15 minutes. So now instead of five or six uh, sites, we're looking at 50 around the world on this engine. That's where I'm being ambitious. I think I agree with you. That does sound very ambitious, especially on the time it takes to spare and replace some of those components. Kudos. And when, you're, when you go from seven facilities to 50, that's when system link and dashboards and global observation, because it's a way that if you're in a different time zone and they have a test system that goes down, it's automatically flagged on our dashboard. We can see it. We're taking a look at self-test. We know what module to replace and do they have the module there? And we have an email in their in basket when they get to work, replace module seven on system 17 with spare part three. Done. It's a virtual 24 hour work cycle. That's ambitious. That's incredible. I can see us getting to a single instrument uh, that is perfectly suited for the medical space. I can see it all lab view driven. I see a lot of reuse, code reuse, uh, because we control both. And I see the monitor, the global monitoring with system link. So ambitiously, I want to go really small and I want to go really low cost. And then if I can get the mean time between failures so great, when we expand into the more uh, expansive countries like China that are remote and has a lot of issues with customs, can these test systems be disposable? Can they work perfectly for seven years, then you just get it back and we'll figure out why it broke and just plug a new one in. Don't mess with it. Chris, you gave us an idea about the terabytes of data that must be acquired and maintained for, I think it was over 10 years. Could you describe uh, the role of data and what data means to you and your organization? The role of data maps directly to patient safety. So if um, pacemakers are deployed in the field and we check an anomaly on a pacemaker, a patient has a problem, and we've got the pacemaker back, the very first question we ask is, is this the only pacemaker that has an issue? So we start failure analysis on the pacemaker immediately, and the first thing they want to take a look at is the production test data. So then we say, does this production test data look any different from one that's not problematic? If we can detect a difference, that's our search vehicle to go back in all the data we've collected immediately and go back and we can quarantine the parts. Medtronic is very, very good at this. The second thing is the FDA requires it. So the more efficiently we do it, we can keep the cost of doing that down very, very low. We've all sat in hundreds of hours of meetings where you have the PowerPoints. I think if you're on a, if you're presenting data on a PowerPoint, you're using an Abacus. What I want to see is we're talking about global yield data, global mean time between events. Why is the systems breaking down on a dashboard that's system link powered in real time? Nobody is collecting data from a database, putting it in Excel and copying and paste it in PowerPoint. It's old by the time it's being presented. Mm -hmm. I want to sit up there in real time and I'm looking at does Puerto Rico have the same yield loss issue as um, Singapore? Why or why not? We can look at the data and we can do that in seconds. And because all of the pieces that you do are all made to commingle, it's just, it's just a natural partnership. And especially if you're a global level and you can help the virtual 24 hour day while we're, while people are sleeping, we can be looking at their information with a plan for the morning. That's gold, that's money. Chris, we know in production tests especially that meeting our MPI schedules or time to market schedules as well as lowering cost uh, is really how we're measured. Could you explain to us some of the ways you're uh, achieving both of those things while also uh, meeting the customer's needs as well? Uh, one of our um, projects was thousands of dollars per second. So if you can cut a 12 months test development cycle time by two thirds, you do the math. And when you make this system lab you based, one instrument, all of the pacing is the same, I can heavily reuse it, uh, you're a superhero monetarily. And the other thing that I didn't talk about that I probably should have, this is engineering ambitiously, 
think about when you're designing a system and, you, and an engineer puts it on the bench and he's got his oscope and he's looking at it and he's, he's running it through its paces. And I'm thinking, why don't we expand electrical test so that it does design verification automatically on a larger population of parts? So now instead of looking at um, test from a manufacturing perspective, you're all the way up into the development phase and you're going through, because we all know variation, it's our DFSS components vary, manufacturing steps vary, and we're in the tiny sub um, uh, ultra low power design. So these little changes make a big difference. So now where it may take an engineer a month to go through a single part, I can go through 50 overnight. So now we can hone in our designs and we can get our design margin that end up being cheaper to manufacture because tests contributed up front. There are two other people who were on the line that would also uh, like to talk with you. Uh, we have here Amanda Webster and her daughter Charity. Now I know Amanda that your family has been directly impacted by, in a positive way, uh, the innovations and the ambitious engineering taking place at Medtronic. Uh, so I'll hand it over to you if you want to tell us something about that. Sure, we're glad to be here just to bring some real life gratitude to the life saving technologies that Medtronic provides. Uh, Charity and I here have been Medtronic users for five and a half years. A long time now. So, Charity has type 1 diabetes. Um, she's oh. insulin dependent for survival. And we use a Medtronic insulin pump to uh, deliver her insulin 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and really a, an additional advancement that has greatly enhanced our life is that in the last 18 months, we were able to get onto the Medtronic hybrid closed loop system, which takes her Medtronic glucose monitor and, and sends that reading straight to her insulin pump to, to deliver a more accurate amount of insulin. It's just even hard to put into words the gratitude we feel for Medtronics as a company and their mission um, for all of your employees. I can tell by the look on your face you're a happy customer. <laughs> uh, Amanda and Charity, thank you both for joining us uh, on the call today. It's, it's obviously very inspiring to see just the everyday impact that uh, companies like Medtronic are making in the way that NI can hopefully help them in that journey. I, I will add that I don't consider you vendors. I want to make sure that's very clear. And the reason I don't is when they show up at my facility, they got their pads out, their pencils out, and they ask questions. They're not selling stuff. So, and it's a partnership. Um, this is extraordinary. And as I've said it before, there's very few vendors that control all as many pieces. You have the app software, the system software, you have the instruments, and you have System Link. You tell me how many vendors you think control all of that for tests. Well, with that, uh, again, Amanda and Charity, thank you very much. Uh, Chris, I definitely want to thank you for taking the time today to share your, again, your thoughts and stories and perspectives, and also letting and I be a part of the incredible journey that you're on uh, to help Medtronic, but also to help so many uh, thousands, if not millions of people around the world uh, live more satisfying, safer lives. So thank you very much for that. You're welcome.